Well, I'm so glad that you chose to watch this one. You're not going to regret it. I believe that this message may pull you in, suck you in to a swirl of kingdom activity that could change your life forever. Uh, I'm going to actually try to hit a few birds with this stone. By the way, we're coming up to New Year. Just finished Christmas here a couple days ago. Happy New Year. What a great year uh, it has been. It's been the best of times. It's been the worst of times. But I love it because I can see it's very clear that we are living in the last days. And how exciting is it that God chose you, that God chose me to live during these times. Times of, yes, incredible darkness but wonderful, glorious light. And I can promise you the glory is only increasing more and more. It's only going to get brighter. I do want to say, just as we're heading into this new year, I want to say a special thank you to everyone who's been a partner of our ministry this last year. I don't usually talk about this, but uh, I want you to know I really do appreciate uh, our ministry partners. Those of you who support monthly and those of you who have uh, been Gideon partners, uh, joined us in helping us raise uh, money for this barn that uh, we believe God's called us to build as this guy gathering place in the wilderness. If you can believe it, I think we're, we're well over $150,000 already. I think we have over 50 Gideon partners. Uh, those are people who have given 33, 33, 3,300 bucks each. Uh, and so uh, I'm kind of blown away. I still keep getting uh, emails every couple days. We got another Gideon partner. I'm like, Lord, we're not even talking about this. Where are these people coming from? But uh, I believe uh, I believe we're going to get to 300 sooner than you think. And when we get to 300, we've got a million dollars raised for that barn. And uh, we'll be digging a hole and getting to work. But, uh, but anyway, so thank you for those of you who partner with our ministry, who believe that it's necessary to create a place that's out of sight, out of mind. Thank you for partnering with us. I know this is kingdom soil and God's going to return it to you a hundredfold in Jesus' name. But um, what I want to talk today about is our upcoming... Well, we've been having a fast, okay? The last few years, we've had a fast every January. Some of you, many of you have done it with us. Uh, myself, uh, Art Lucier, a bunch of friends uh, in ministry, we kind of, we've been doing this every January. In, Janu in uh, 2021, we did 21 for 21. We did a 21-day fast, and many of you guys did it with us on water. We all got pretty skinny for that one. And then in 2022, we did the same thing, except we added a day. 22 for 22, tw and many of you did it again on water. 22 days on water, January 1st to 22nd. It seemed like the most natural thing, you know, so you sort of get, uh, you, just, you know, if, if it ain't broke, you know, why fix it? We were, I was leaning towards 23 for 23. Now, you can't do that forever, because when we get to the year 2060, you know, uh, we'd all die. But uh, 23, you can still do 23 days on water. I was leaning towards that. And I actually like water fasting. I know a lot of people hate it. It's torture to many, but uh, I enjoy water fast. The first few days are kind of painful and horrible. But after that, I cut, my brain stops talking to my stomach and I get into this really cool zone where I feel buzzy all the time. I hear God clearer. I get more dreams, more revelation. I see way more people uh, uh, healed. Miracles happen when I pray. It's fun. I love fasting. And so uh, the most natural and the easiest thing for me was, hey, let's do 23 for 23. And I know a bunch of people were going to do it with me. But uh, quite honestly, and I know this sounds like a cop out, but this is the absolute truth. Quite honestly, for the last month, I have felt the Holy Spirit saying, I want to do something different this year, Steve, at least with me and those who run with me. And, uh, and so rather than a 23 for 23 fast, we're calling this the 23 for 23 all you can eat feast. Now, no, we're not going to be going to the buffet uh, every day. Uh, this is a spiritual feast, uh, not so much a flesh feast. In fact, it's very much the opposite of a flesh feast. But I want to talk to you about 23 days. Listen to this. 23 days absolutely set apart 
to feast on the Lord. I'm asking you and inviting you to join me and saying, January 1st to 23, I am going to feast on the Lord like I have never feasted on the Lord before. Now, there is a some element of fasting involved, uh, but I'm going to let you pray about that and ask the Lord what that looks like for you. Now, personally, I'm doing veggies. I'm going to do veggies and water, and I'm not even going to let my wife cook for me because I know she can make vegetables taste delicious. She adds, I think she puts a whole bunch of butter and oil, and she can make uh, vegetables into a uh, you know, 4,000 calorie meal if she wants to. And so she tries to fatten me up on veggie fasts, and so I'm not going to let her do that. I'm going to eat cold, raw vegetables and drink water. So I will suffer. In fact, I've never, this is the truth, I've never actually done a successful veggie fast. I've, I've, I've done multiple 40-day fasts on water, 21, 22s. Uh, I've done lots of water fasts and never cheated a bit. I've never actually succeeded at a veggie fast. I've always cheated on every veggie fast. There's a confession. Now, I'll tell you if I cheat, so you'll know. Uh, maybe just uh, my, uh, my willingness to confess my sin, maybe that will give me the strength this time to actually commit to 23 days on veggies and water. That's a true Daniel fast. He ate veggies. He drank water. And what happens is you, your body just gets really, really clean. Okay. Just like a water fast, but differently. I actually get more dreams on a veggie fast. Don't know why it just happens, but uh, you really, it, you, you, you know, it does weaken your flesh. You're definitely experiencing a cleanse. And so I'm going to be doing veggie fast. You pray about it. You do what you want. Some of you still feel like you're called to water fast, or maybe you're supposed to water fast for the first week. You be led by the Spirit. But here's the thing about this fast. This is what I'm asking. Let's make the main focus of this fast not what you put in your mouth or don't put in your mouth, but rather what you take into your heart what you take into your mind. Feasting on the Lord. First of all, and, and I would ask you to consider three areas, body, soul, and spirit. So yes, the body has one component. What does that look like for you? You pray about it and ask the Lord, what's that going to look like for you? But also, not only body, but soul. That's the area of your mind, your will, your emotions, everything that's happening between your ears. I'm asking you to really prayerfully consider taking things up a notch for 23 days, a 23-day commitment that you will not allow yourself to eat all of the usual inputs of this world. I hope for many of you, this would include social media, a total fast from social media, uh, not watching YouTube videos, not watching television shows, except for maybe The Chosen. I can't not watch the next... If you're not watching The Chosen, by the way, <clears throat> you want to check that out. But not filling yourself with TV and YouTube and social media. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm asking you to prayerfully consider what you are going to fast from in the area of the mind and the soul, what, what you're not going to take in, and write it down so that you can't change your mind later, or I can't remember what I committed to. I'm writing down, I'm making a list. This is what I will eat, this is what I will not eat in the realm of the body. In the realm of the soul and the mind, this is what I am not looking at. This is what I am not watching. This is what I will not fix my eyes on for 23 days. And then thirdly, not only body, not only soul, but also the spirit. How are you going to feed your spirit for the next 23 days or from January 1 to 23? And I'm asking you to make a, you know, this isn't the rest of your life, okay? This is a commitment, but it's only a 23-day commitment. Would you make a larger commitment to your devotional life and your worship life than you ever have before, okay? If you're normally a person who spends an hour a day at the Word, normally... Would you consider two hours a day in the Word of God? If you're a person who normally spends 15 minutes a day in worship, would you consider taking that to another level? If you've never memorized Scripture, would you consider, hey, I'm going to memorize one Scripture 
every day for 23 days. I don't want to tell you what to do. I'm just saying, I want you to prayerfully consider how you are going to feed your spirit and then has to include the Word of God, by the way. I had a spiritual son of mine who uh, about... I think it was 19 days ago now. I know because he's been sending me a text every day for 19 days. 19 days ago, we were talking. And uh, he he was really struggling. Just He said, man, I'm just feeling like garbage. I'm just, you know, struggling in my heart, struggling with my faith. My marriage is kind of, you know, we're just at each other's throat. Just feeling really blah. My business is blah. Everything is blah. And I said to him, I said, how much time have you spent in the Word this week? You know, because he's complaining about how much his life sucks. I said, how much time have you spent in the Word this week? And he said, oh, I've just been so busy, man. I'm sorry. And I'm like, "Um, okay, well, how much time have you spent in prayer this week? Honestly, almost none. I've just been. And I said, bro, your life sucks because you don't feed your spirit. Uh, you know, and he's like, well, tell me what to do. Well, I don't like to usually, uh, I don't like to control uh, those who run with me. I don't boss them around. I'm not one of those really strong authoritarian types. But I said, here's what I'll, here, I'll give you, I'm going to give you a challenge, okay? He said, you want a challenge? He said, yeah, give me a challenge, Steve. I said, 40 days, okay? Just 40 days. For 40 days, I want you to, and set a timer, okay? Every day for 40 days, I want you to spend an hour in the word of God. You have to have, and you can't be driving on your lap and a Bible on your lap for an hour. Now you can read for half an hour and then talk to God about it for 10 minutes and worship, but you are one hour alone with God with an open Bible for 40 days. And I said, and you're going to text me every single day after you've done it so that I know you've done it. And he's like, done. I'll do it. Well, he is now on day 19. I'm getting these texts every day. And by one week, and especially after two weeks, he's saying, Steve, like, I can't tell you how much this has impacted my life. I'm feeling God. I'm hearing his voice again. He had an encounter the other day where the presence of the Lord just came in his room. He was buzzing like a bee. Why? Because, not because he's created some religious thing, you, you could get just get religious. Some people just read their Bible every day, but it doesn't impact their life. I'm not trying to turn people into religious rule followers. But here's the reality. You're not going to have intimacy with God. You're not going to experience the presence of God if you don't have relationship with God. And you're not going to have relationship with God if you don't make real time for God. Relationships take time. And so uh, here's a spiritual son of mine on day 19, and he is just vibrating. He's been serving the Lord for decades, and yet he's never experienced what he's experiencing right now because he's never been faithful for 19 days straight. Well, what would happen to you if for 23 days, make it 40, why don't you? You made a decision that every single day, no matter what, I am going to take, uh, I would say, at least an hour. Jesus said that. You know, the, the, Jesus said, can't you pray for one hour? Can't you give me one hour? What would you do for 23 days? And this is between you and the Lord, but I'm asking you this. Write it down and make a decision. How are you going to feed your spirit for 23 days? How are you going to guard your mind and your soul for 23 days? And how? How are you going to posture yourself in the realm of the flesh? Realize this. Your flesh versus your spirit, it's like there's this teeter-totter effect that's always happening. The reason why fasting works, by the way, is because fasting weakens your flesh. It's not because fasting impresses God. He couldn't care less if you fast, and he couldn't care less if you cheated on a fast. You know, I had one person, I think I was on day 20 or 25 of a fast, and someone was saying, whoa, you know, they were so amazed, and they were, you know, and and I, I just, just to, just to kind of, illustrate how little I think God cares about fasting. They were ooing and eyeing, and how do you do it? I took an olive, threw it in my mouth, and swallowed it, and they were, Ugh. they were like almost like shocked and hurt and offended. Oh no, let me tell you something. God's not offended at all, and then I still went on with my fast. Did it set me back at all? Was God offended? Did he say, oh no, Steve, I can't bless you now because you ate an olive? No, 
The all have set me back probably about an hour, a couple of calories, and then he got right back to where I was. You see, fasting is not about impressing God. Fasting is about weakening your flesh. The Bible says, when I am weak, Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. And so there's something powerful about weakness because, like I say, it's like a teeter-totter. Have you ever seen two kids on a teeter-totter? Who's up and who's down? You know, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, there, there would always be that fat kid, you know, he'd be at the bottom and, you know, the skinny kid's up at the top and he's like, come on, let me down. And the fat kid's just laughing because he can't, he's in control. The fat kid is always in control. And so he can jump off and watch the guy fall or he can push up and down. But the person who is in control of the teeter-totter is always the person who weighs the most. And so it is with the flesh versus the spirit. You, most of us, our flesh is always the fat one. Our flesh is always heavier than our spirit. And so our flesh is so often in control. The reason why fasting works is because flat, fasting weakens the flesh. Your flesh gets weaker, your flesh gets lighter, and then it tips the scale and your spirit begins to get the upper hand, okay? But there's other ways to tip the scale, not just weakening the flesh, but you can also add muscle to your spirit. You can add strength to your spirit. And so that's what we do when we meditate on God's Word, when we memorize the Word, when we spend time in prayer, when we feed our spirits, when we worship the Lord, our spirit gets stronger and stronger. And so what's better, fasting your flesh or uh, sowing into your spirit? The answer is yes, <laughs> both. Do both. Fast your flesh. Uh, weaken your flesh, uh, empty your flesh of all of those 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 treats that you like to give it through through social media and through all of the the inputs of this world that just fatten your flesh. Even the foods that we eat and the garbage. Make a choice to weaken or lighten the area of the flesh while feeding your spirit. And I guarantee, if you do this for twenty three days you will see absolute breakthrough in your life like never before. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be strongly impacted, not just by fasting, but by feasting, by choosing to set your mind on the things of God. That's how you live in the Spirit. I know I'm at 17 minutes, but I'm going to keep going. I hope that some of you have the strength to just stay with me a few more minutes. I want to share a couple scriptures with you that I really believe will uh, inspire you to lean into this 23 days in a, in a big way. Romans chapter 8. I spent all morning just meditating on this. I love Romans 8. I spent a lot of time in Romans 8. But Romans 8, it talks about the, f the, the flesh versus the spirit. Smith Wigglesworth said, if you could just get into Romans 8, you would be sin-proof and devil-proof, okay? It teaches us about the realm of the flesh and the realm of the spirit. Now, most people live their lives, even most Christians, in the realm of the flesh. And Romans 8 says that those who are in the realm of the flesh... They can't please God. Now, that doesn't mean they're not loved by God, and it doesn't mean they're going to heaven. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But to be pleasing to the Lord, to, to experience God, to have intimacy with God, to bring Him satisfaction, we have to enter into what's called the realm of the Spirit. And uh, to do that requires fixing your mind on the things of the Spirit. Here, listen to the scripture. This is Romans 8, verse 5. It says, Those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who are according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. What's that saying? It's saying you can live in the flesh or you can live in the Spirit, and it's your choice, okay? God doesn't choose whether you're going to live in the flesh or live in the Spirit. You choose. And you make that decision when you decide what you will set your mind on. He's saying, those who set their mind on the things of the Spirit, they live in the Spirit. He says, those who set their mind on the things of the flesh, live in the flesh. Even if you're a Christian? Yes, even if you're a Christian. What you do with your mind matters. Many people go on these fasts. I've seen people even do these fasts with me. Long fasts, 40 days, 21 they eat nothing. They drink water. But they don't set their minds 
on the things of the Spirit. They still keep watching YouTube videos. They still keep scrolling Facebook every day. They still keep watching movies. They still keep wasting their time. And they end up losing a whole bunch of weight, but they don't really enter into the realm of the Spirit. I want to tell you something. The point of fasting is to be a set apart so that you can feast on the Lord. Fill yourself with Christ. Eat the Word. Meditate on the Word. Be filled with Him and really tip that scale. Not just starve yourself so you might have one or two more dreams. That happens. But the feasting is more important than the fasting. And so setting your mind on the things of the Spirit. Listen to this. Verse 13. No, verse 11. So then, brethren, we are under obligation. Say, Steve, I'm not under obligation. Yes, you are. You were bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. You have an obligation to live a spiritual life. Okay? He says, brethren, we are under obligation, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. Paul says. Now, he's not talking physically. He's not saying you're going to die if you live according to the flesh. You're going to die and get buried. There's no funeral. He means spiritually. He means emotionally. He means just death in your life, financially, relationally. You're going to think your life is just going to be dead if you live in the realm of the flesh. So he says, not we have an obligation, not to the flesh. To those who live according, if you live according to the flesh, you must die. But he says, but if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now that's what we're going to do during this 23 days. Let me say that again. If by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. You need to be asking the Lord, Lord, what areas of the flesh do you want me to deal with during these 23 days? What areas do you want me to grow in? Where, how do you want me to mature? What do you want me to put to death during these 23 days? I think you know what God wants you to kill in your life. This 23 days is not about you just fasting and going really deep for 23 days and then just going back to life as usual. This 23 days is about you coming to a whole new level of maturity in your life and then never backing off ever again. Not to say that everything you do for 23 days will be your practice forever. I mean, you might decide you're going to spend four hours a day uh, in the presence of the Lord. Well, that may be a commitment you can't keep for 23 years, but you could do for 23 days. However, I do say this is 23 days of you going to a new level of maturity and that you're going to gain ground that you will not lose. Listen to this. For those, he goes on to say, verse 14, 8, 14. So he says, actually, let's go back to 13. Read it again so we get into the flow here. If you're living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds, or the misdeeds, of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Listen to this. For all who, not all who once were, not all who go to church on Sunday, not all who call themselves Christians, all who are being led, present tense, all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now that word sons, uh, it's not children of God, as you'll see in other places of passages of Scripture where it says technon. That's a Greek word, technon. It means children of God. All Christians are technon. They're all children of God. They all go to heaven when they die. This is not that. This is the word huios. Paul Keith Davis talks about this a lot. If you never listened to him, you should check him out. The huios. The huios are the mature sons of God. They are those who share the same nature as the Father. Okay, A huios is a mature son of God. And he says, those who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the mature sons of God. These are the ones who share the same nature as their Father. And going down here in Romans 8, it it says that all of creation, listen to this, for the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing 
of the sons. That's the wheels, not the technon. He's not, creation is not longing to find out who all the little baby Christians will be. Creation is longing for the revelation of the wheels, mature sons of God. The world wants to know who will they be. And, and it's not going to be everybody. There's going to arise in these dark days, in these last days, a company of people. I call them the one percenters. Uh, I often talk about from Hebrews 12. It talks about when we get to heaven, there's going to be the general assembly. That's all the Christians. General assembly, church of the firstborn. But then it mentions this little group. Right? It mentions them right between the father and the son. This The spirits of the righteous made perfect. Who are they? It's the spirits of the righteous made teleo oh the ones who let god finish them that's what it actually means those who are completed uh, sometimes it's translated perfect but that's not what it means it's not about being perfect it's about letting god complete you it's about let god letting god finish you when we get to heaven there's going to be a group nestled between the father and the son the teleo oh the ones who let god finish them I'm calling to you during this 23 days. Will you let God complete you in a new way? Not, not, I know he'll be working on you for the rest of your life, but so many have plateaued. So many have not grown in God for many years. Would you picture yourself like a half-finished Lego set? Would you let God add a few more pieces to you during this 23 days? Would you let God continue to mold you and shape you into the person that he created you to be? And what does that look like devotionally? What did that look, if you were a mature, if you were truly mature, ask the Lord, God, if I was completed, if I was teleo, if I had become everything you designed me to be, what would my devotional life look like? every day? How much time would I spend in your word? How much time would I spend in worship if I was what you would, if I was the finished version of Steve Holmstrom? What would that look like for my meditation in the word? How much time would I spend memorizing scripture and meditating on the word? What would that look like for me? Would I go for walks every day and talk with God in the wilderness? What would that look for you? Would that be, would that include you finally learning that instrument? that he's been asking you to play. Some of you, maybe that's what God's asking you to do, is during these 23 days, I'm going to learn guitar. <laughs> I'm going to spend an hour a day. God's been speaking to me about learning an instrument. I'm going to spend an hour a day worshiping the Lord, learning those chords. What has God been trying to pull you into that you've been resisting him? You know, I, I was actually thinking about calling this the wheels fast or the teleos fast. It's not about just fasting food. It's about making the decision to let God finish you in a new way, complete you. Let him develop you and mature you. Hallelujah. Man, I'll tell you, get into Romans 8 during these 23 days. Meditate on it. Memorize it. He says, for the Anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing. That word revealing is it's the uh, apocalypsis. That's where we get the word apocalypse from. It means the, the uncovering. Kind of like, you know, you think of a, a chef in a fancy restaurant comes to the table and he's got the pot and he lifts up the cover and ta-da, look at what we, we've created. The revealing, the uncovering of the huios, mature sons of God. The whole earth is anxiously longing, wondering who's going to let God finish them? Who's going to be the one who comes into maturity? Who's going to be one of the ones who shares the same nature as the Father? God's desire for you is not that you would just stay where you are. He wants to transform you into the very image of of his son. He wants you to smell like Jesus, taste like Jesus, look like Jesus, sound like Jesus. No, it doesn't happen overnight. And I'm not telling you to be perfect for 23 days, but I'm asking you if you would be a part of this 23 for 23 feast, I'm asking you to really prayerfully consider what does God want to do with you? How does God want to take you to a new level? Body, 
soul, spirit. Make some tough decisions. Don't go, I mean, don't go crazy. Make sure you com- commit to something you can actually, with the grace of God, that you can actually do for 23 days. But I'm asking you to make some tough decisions and this, and make a decision. Write it down. Write it down real clearly. This is what my 23 for 23 feast is going to look like. This is how I'm going to feast on God for 23 days. This is how I'm going to protect my mind and my soul from the inputs of the world for 23 days. And this is what I'm going to eat and drink for 23 days. You make that decision. And uh, maybe even, like, like, uh, like I was telling you about a spiritual son of mine, maybe you want to find someone who you love. Not every, by the way, not everybody can use me. So don't, I can't get a text from everybody or an email from everyone every day. But find someone you love. So find someone else who's going to be a part of this 23 days. And just be accountable them, to them. Text them every day and say, all right. I did my one hour in the Word, and now I'm going on to my worship or, or whatever else. But keep yourself accountable to someone and do it for 23 days. And once we get to January 21st or 23rd, then you want to have another real hard conversation, prayer talk with God and say, Now, Lord, we've created some new habits. What do we continue in? And uh, maybe you'll just keep living like this forever. Maybe you will embrace a spirit-filled life. You're going to have encounters with God. Like my friend, you're going to experience His presence. You're going to hear His voice. You're going to go to new places. I pray to God that you're going to grow so much spiritually, you're just never going to want to come back. You're never going to want to go back. But start with the 23-day commitment. Uh, Hallelujah. Boy, I could just preach on this forever, but... um, Listen, if you haven't already, because some of you, I hope many of you won't be looking at social media, Facebook, all of that for the, for the 23 days. But if you want to get videos uh, that I will be sending out through email, and I'll probably do quite a few during this 23 days, just make sure you send me an email to feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com and say, Steve, I'm joining the 23-day feast. All right? And uh, if you send me an email saying that, uh, I'll send out emails to those who are uh, who are part of that. Probably more to that group than to my normal uh, regular email list because I don't want to bother everybody. But if you're joining in and you've made a commitment, I'm going to go hard. I'm going to lean in. I'm going to feast on the Lord for 23 days, and I'm going to fast. Whatever that looks like to you, it should affect your body. It should affect your spirit. It should affect your Soul. By the way, many. It should also incl- affect our body in the realm of exercise. Part of the reason why I want to eat vegetables on this fast is because I feel God's asking me to take things up a notch in the area of even just fitness and exercise. And I need a few calories to be able to pull off what I think God's telling me to do during these 23 days. And so you prayerfully consider what does this 23 days look like. But if you want to get emails from me, During this feast, uh, just send me an email to feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com and say, Steve, include me in the feast emails and uh, I will make sure we do. Otherwise, um, you know what? You just lean in and go for God. Uh, It's going to be a wonderful time. It's going to be a wonderful time. Don't be satisfied with where you're at. The first of the year. This is something about January 1st. I mean, I know it's just... uh, Every day should be a new day. Every day is an opportunity to grow in God. But there's something about the new year that it's it's just an exciting, wonderful time to just start fresh and just to say, hey, I want to say yes to God in a whole new way. And, uh, And so join us. 23 for 23, all you can eat, feast on the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you soon.